So we only have 30 minutes, and uh, there's a lot to cover. So I'm probably going to say you'll have to look at the documentation lots of times. Um, but this hopefully will give you an idea of how to uh, get started, do something with React in the WordPress API. So I'm Eric Doublack. I'm a senior developer and co-founder at 11 Online. I installed my first WordPress site in 2004. Um, these days I work mostly in React. On the front end, I use either Python in the Flask framework or PHP with the Lumen framework in the back end. I also do a little bit of Android dev, doing more of that, and of course WordPress. I've been using React for about two years. So, what are we going to do today? Very brief intro into React, brief intro on the WordPress API, and then we're going to go over a simple example, not how to do a headless WordPress site. Um, but how to start using React components in your existing uh, WordPress themes or plugins. Okay. So, I don't know how much you know about React. Um, and React, first off, is not a framework. It's a collection of libraries. Um, when I build a, uh, entirely, uh, a front end entirely in React, I don't know, do we, Jay, maybe a lot of better idea? 40 libraries, 30 libraries, quite a few. Um, React itself doesn't try to do everything. Um, and since it's not a framework, there's a lot of different approaches to use React. Um, everybody has their own approach, and when you throw in other things in the mix, like Redux, everybody has their own approach on top of that. Um, so how I explain React might not be how you do React, or might not, not, might, might not be how a tutorial does React if you look at it later. Um, but I'll tell you how I like to think about using React, which is React is a way to build predictable user interfaces based on the state or the data of the app. And as your data changes, so does the presentation. Um, this is different if you're used to using jQuery. jQuery, you are manipulating the DOM constantly, right? Something happens, you change a value, you're doing all this manipulation. React doesn't work like that. The state changes, and the presentation changes. Okay. WordPress REST API, it's now part of WordPress core. Uh, does anybody use a WordPress API? Okay. So, um, how we're going to be using Word, the WordPress API right now, uh, we're not, we could use admin Ajax. Is anybody familiar with admin Ajax? Okay, few more people, not that very many more. Um, Admin Ajax is kind of the old way where you might do Ajax with your WordPress theme or plugin. Um, but unlike Admin Ajax, uh, the WordPress core by or WordPress API bypasses a lot of things. Um, Delicious Brains has a really good blog post about all the steps that are involved in an admin Ajax request and a WordPress API request so you can kind of compare how the two are used, which one's more efficient. Um, WordPress REST API has a lot of built-in endpoints. We're not going to use them today, um, but it's super easy to write custom ones as well. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so React. Uh, React is daunting. When I first started with React, I had to figure out how to build the project and use Webpack, and it was really complicated. Um, right now, there's a really, really easy way to get started with React. It's called the Create React App. It's a CLI tool. You can, on the bottom, there's a link. Uh, and Facebook Incubator put it out. And what it does is it deals with all the stuff that's hard about getting started with React. It just deals with it for you. So it deals with the build process. It has a local server, it has a file watcher, and then it does hot reloading uh, while you're in development, which is really nice. Okay, so I don't know. I can share my slides at the end of Twitter so you can get some of these URLs. Okay, so let's get started. Let's get coding. Live demo, what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> I have a repo of the demo, um, 11 online. It's on GitHub slash 11 online React WP plugin demo. Okay, so what I've already done is I've created a plugin. So I'm I uh, this will work just the same way in a theme. 
I did a plugin because I thought it would be a little bit easier. I didn't do anything in the plugin other, other than create an index.php file, and I used create React app to create a WP plugin directory with the React app in it. And this is, when you use create React app, this is what it looks like. You have um, package JSON. When you install it, you have to run npm or install. Um, and you have a very simple index.js file, which there's a bunch of React stuff in here. But basically what you're doing is you're binding your app to an uh, element on the page. And then um, how they have it set up, most of the logic happens in app.js. So that's kind of how I started index.php. Used create React app to create the WP plugin directory. Okay. Sides with how this is set up, and I didn't spend time to fix it, is um, the local development server is not easy to use with the create React app one, isn't easy to use with creating a WordPress plugin, at least I didn't have an easy time. So when you run npm run build, um, you get this file main.something.js, uh, and that changes every time you run run build. So if you're in queuing that script, just pay attention to what that is. Uh, so you're in queuing the right script. Okay. So this is like my second and third command. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little review plugin, very simple. At the end of a post, we're going to put a little option to leave reviews. So I'm doing something very simple, right? I'm added filter for the content. I'm going to add the reviews. Um, and if it's a single post, but not the home page or the blog page, I'm going to add this div with an idea of root, which in my index.js file is the ID I'm looking for to put the app inside of it. And then I'm going to enqueue the React script. Okay? Um, is everybody following me so far? Are we good? Yeah? Okay. So, now I have this post, and at the end I have this line to get started, edit, source, slash, app.js, and save to reload, which is what I have in my app.js file. So now we see, okay, we used create React app, we built our React script, our plugin pulls that into the page. Okay. I'm trying to go fast, but tell me if I'm going too fast, because there is a so your, your React code got compiled to main.js? Yes, it gets compiled to main.js. Can you push that manually like when I move to user? Uh, I'm just running this locally. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that's what you would do? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. But, so now um, we're going to add some API logic. Okay. So using, like I said, the REST API has a bunch of built-in endpoints. Um, there's even a Java Backbone library that allows you to work with that. Um, since I'm not doing something really with posts or post meta, I decided that I'd do my own custom things, which is really, really easy. It's a lot, if, if you have used admin Ajax, which you know if you haven't in this room, it's very similar. Um, you get to add an action, which is this REST API init, and then you use this register REST route and those different, um, different parameters that go in there. You have what methods you take, and what, what your callback is, and then what route you're using. Okay. So I created one, an add review route, which we're not actually going to use yet, and then um, our git reviews. So um, this is just looking for a parameter of an ID, um, which then is passed in as the post data. 
or the post or it's passed in as data and then uh, <coughs> using the ID. This is all in the documentation. Um, so I would just you know when you start writing your own routes, just review the documentation. It's all pretty clear. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to we're going to start with this get reviews. And I wrote a helper function to get re, uh, reviews by post. And I'm going to use that here, because I'm, I'm also going to use that there. It's going to make more sense why we're doing that. And these are all uh, just open on authenticated guys, right? Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's all that commit is. <coughs> Just the basics of how we get the route. And by the way, this is plugin is for demo purposes only. There's a lot of things I would change if I was to put this in production. For instance, I wouldn't do a query in a loop, and I'd probably want to authenticate if you're leaving a review that you are the user you say you are, but this will be helpful for our demo. Okay. So, our next commit. Okay, so this is where we start doing some work in React. Um, so, remember I said at the beginning, React is, uh, it has a state, it has some data, and then based on whatever that state is, it's going to render your app. So each React component has several pieces. There's only one that's required, and that's the render function which says, okay, this is what it looks like when we render it. And then there's all these different life cycle functions. Um, and you can define an initial state. It's often really helpful to define an initial state because React behaves predictably when the state is predictable. Okay? So what we're going to use is the component did mount life cycle function, which just means our component mounted what do I do? Okay, so in our case, we're gonna get the reviews. All right, um, we'll get our reviews, and we will parse the JSON, and then we're gonna if the status is 200, if we have a success, we're we're going to then set the state to have our data. Okay, so we have an empty review state. Okay. When the component mounts, it says give me the reviews, and then we update the state with that. And then our render function will then change and display the data how we want. Okay. So this is all really simple. What we're going to be doing is we're going to uh, get our reviews from the state. Um, we're going to put them into an array, and then and the reason is that uh, once you're in this re in the return part of the render function, there's a limited number of things you can do. So you kind of have to prepare your data before the return, and then you can do inline things like mapping through your array. Um, if this looks super unfamiliar, this is uh, ES6, um, so the syntax is a little different. Um, but what we're doing is we're just saying, okay, we're going to go through our review array. We're going to map through it, we're going to take the review, and we're going to display some data. So I'm using a package from NPM called star rating component, which is just a React component that gives you some uh, little features, some uh, props, which are these values here are called props, and you can have either values or functions there. So some of these will we'll see later on, we'll take a function, and we'll do something when the user interacts with this component in a certain way. So we're just review we're going through the array, we're showing the star component, and then we're just saying if the review has an image, we're going to show the image, and then we're going to show the name. Okay, so what does this look like? All right, so before we have this to get started, edit, and we do this, we reload, and Look, we have our reviews. Okay, so when we I load the page the first time, right? It's not there the first second. It's because the component mounts, and then it does the fetch. 
and pulls in the data. All right, we good so far? Am I not going too fast? Okay. So now we're going to start to see how React starts to really work in our favor. Okay, we're going to add a refresh. So let's first just cut, go over the code. So in our render function, oh, also while I remember this, um, you'll see if you, as I've been um, doing these commits, I forget to show it in NextPHP. But what I'm starting to do is I'm starting to add some global variables to this page. You can see, instead of just um, appending to the content my group div, I'm also appending a script that has the post ID and the user ID. Okay? Um, this is kind of a gotcha because it's not super easy to take WordPress data and pass it to a React app. And so you have to set some kind of global variable where you're passing some data. Um, but the Create React app has this really great um, compiler that tells you about all the mistakes you've made and if you have any warnings. And one thing that it will freak out about is if you use a variable that the app doesn't see. So um, when I define these variables, like post ID and user ID, you may notice that I'm having to use this ESLint disable next line. I'm telling, I'm telling the linter to not pay attention to this because it doesn't know about it. Okay. It's one of the gotchas of Create React app. And this also is true if you're using like a Google Maps. Uh, if you're using a Google Maps and you are, have a script tag that's pulling in that library into your React app, and you're using Create React app, it'll say, hey, I don't know about this global rule. Yeah. I'm just going to step back for a minute. I mean, your requirement for all this is a Node.js mark, right, to some degree? Yeah, so you have to have Node installed on your computer, and then you can install uh, Create React app. And I don't remember. There's a few other things that are required, but yeah. OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, OK, is the user logged in? So if there is a user ID, we'll say, OK, this person is logged in. And then we're also going to say, do they have a review? Um, our review in state has the user ID as the, as the key. So if it exists, we're going to say this person has a review. And then um, I always mispronounce this tertiary, inline tertiary conditionals. Did I say it right? Tertiary, tertiary right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I was like, I always like this myself. So, um, once you're in the return function, kind of like there's a limited number of operations, there's also a limited number of conditions you can use. So we're going to be using this inline uh, conditional. Oh, ternary. Ternary. Is that ternary. Sorry. Yeah. I thought you were wondering if you were pronouncing the word tertiary. But, uh, yeah, it's ternary. ternary. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. No. <coughs> you gave me false hope, but I got it right. <laughs> so we just check, okay, does this person have a review? Does the person not have a review? Are they logged in? If so, right, that's what this question mark is. We're going to show these components. Otherwise, we're going to not show anything. And anytime you're doing something JavaScripty in your return function, you have to use the curly braces. That's where it shows how to do something. So you'll see here we have this prop that we didn't use before, which is on star click, which takes a value and then calls a function. So we have this function add review. Okay, so we go up to our higher up in our component and we have this add review method. So all this is doing is it's doing uh, what we set up our REST API to do. Take a post with some data and save it. And again, what we do is, okay, we're gonna post, we're gonna get the response, we're gonna parse the JSON, and if we have a successful response, we're going to set the state with the new reviews. Okay. Now this is kind of, maybe it's a lot, okay? Do I have most of you here? Okay, so let's see what this looks like. I have some reviews. Let me delete them. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 
Amen. It's all in the good ones. Okay. All right. So, I deleted my reviews. I'm going to refresh the page. Okay. So, I don't see any reviews. I'm going to leave my review. Okay. I'll leave a four star review. And then it shows up. Okay. Did I manipulate the DOM in any way? In any of my functions? Am I saying, you just. You do this thing, and then you hide the leave a review, and then you show my review. No, what I what I do is right. I send a post to the API, and then I get back the reviews, and then those replace my new review states, my new review state, right? So I'm not manipulating the DOM. I'm letting React deal with the DOM for me, and all I do is update the state. So um, I'll sit back. Okay. Sorry, this is so fast. This is kind of a lot to cover. All right, let's go to the last commit. Build it. Okay, so this commit, we're going to add a little extra feature, which is average reviews. Okay, this is all done in the render function above the return. All we're going to do is, as we build our review array, we're just going to get the review total, and then we're going to create a review average by dividing the total by the number of items in the array. And then we're going to say, if there's reviews, we're going to show the average review. Okay? Very simple, right? Um, again, when we, you know, this, okay, I'll just, I'll do the demo for my other Fresh. Okay, so we have this other review. We have this four star review for me. We have the average review is four stars. I don't like this post. I'll give it two stars. And what do we get? We, again, we get the review shows up and we get the average review. It's right there for us. We don't have to do any manipulation. Okay, so why React in the WordPress API? Besides it's sexy, that's a bad reason to do anything. But our example was really simple, right? We could have easily done this in jQuery. Um, but the more complex our UI gets, the bigger gains we get with React. Why? Because all we're doing is updating the state of the component. We're not worrying about all these little interactions. So um, we just let React deal with it, and. You know, as we as this would as this example could build and we start adding things like upvotes and downloads on reviews or comments on reviews or did you find this review helpful? The more we add to that, the more gains we get with React because the less likely we are to forget to update this little piece of UI. Um, we just update the state and we let React deal with it for us. Um, okay, questions. This is what I wanted to say kind of for. Yeah. So, where's, like, what sort of events is, is React listening for? It's listening for something to happen somewhere there. Like, Anytime I do an action, I return the reviews. So, okay. so, if you look at the code in the API, that's why I wrote this helper function, get reviews by post, because my add review uses the same thing. So, I'm returning something predictable. I'm returning all my data. Okay, and then I just use that data when I add a view, and I update the state again. So, like, you know, we just did a project or a company that was, you know, we're dealing with like all this relational data. That it's uh, it's for balloon rides and it's balloons and passengers and employees assigned to their balloons and different employees can have different roles in the balloons all this complex stuff. And with React, it was really nice to build because all we do is, every time we make a change, we send the data back from the server and everything updates for you. We don't get lost in all of the, you know, I... Because mm -hmm. every time you make a change, it's one of these functions in React and it's posting and getting to the server. Or something. Yeah. yeah, and then I update the state, yeah. and the render function it predictably updates for what I need. So, you know, this example I think could go either way, but the more complex you get, you can start, hopefully, you can start to see the gains. Yeah, five minutes. 
So what happens when a review is added? There's no thing right have a button that says add and then JavaScript to the So in this case, yeah. the... So you add a review, the state updates, the new state has your review. So how does, where's the add that people are saying about the event, right? So where, when you, when you enter your data for the, the review, mm -hmm. normally you would hit add as a button. Yeah. And then where does the app kick in, like where's that happening here? So when you, the start component, has this on start flag property that this is just, it's just a library component that you install through NPM. So when I say when you click on a star, call this add review function. Add review then posts to the server, gets the all the review data back, and updates the state. So React isn't listening for anything. All it's doing is saying when this response, when I get this response from my request. I update the state, and then the render function deals with the DOM form. So that on star, that's not the same thing? Well, it's just a click list. Okay. That's all it is. Is this just overwhelming? I don't know. Like, I've been doing this a long time, so. Yeah. Hopefully, you can see I didn't write a lot for what I, I accomplished. Yeah. So I'm not, like I've never written React app before. Okay. That part where you keep saying and it returns all the state, right? Yeah, we return all the reviews. Yeah, so, I mean, how does that, does that just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Or, 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 it's, or is it just, just the reviews for that post? That's the it's part. just the reviews for that post. Okay. Really, most browsers can handle an unbelievable amount of data in the state. Um, we recently finally ran into the limit, and it was like insane. I mean, how much? Like hundreds of megs or what? I don't remember what it was, but it was thousands of database records. Mm -hmm. um, I think tens, tens of thousands. 60,000 database records is what finally pushed over the edge. So, um, in this case, yeah, we're just getting the reviews for this post. Every time we interact, you know, every time we have a review, we just replace it wholesale. Yeah, and you know, there's a lot about like the virtual DOM in React. That's way too much to get into, but um, well, to see see the data already there, user ID, post ID, review. So that's all passing the post ID, right? So yeah, so it's just for that post. Yeah, in our this in our Git, we're using the post ID that's defined in our index.php file. It's an interesting approach, though. It's like heavy on the data. Mm -hmm. uh, let's re let's have everything be the state machine, and then it'll be sorted out by later. Yeah. Yes. I, I noticed you were checking if the user was logged in here in the React code. Is there also something in the API endpoint that's verifying that? Or uh, no, I, mean, I didn't bother to do that. But, but if you were doing this in real life, and you really I would. Know. Yeah, and the WP API is documentation how to valid or how to authenticate requests. Okay. Um, I just didn't bother doing it for the That would be the PHP that's what that. Yeah, you have to pass something from your JavaScript, but yeah, and then the PHP. What's Render look like again? So, pair the data, and then we. <laughs> and you can react, you can create all these subcomponents that you can plug in, kind of like we're using the star rating component. Um, you know, in a like mature React app, you might have hundreds of components uh, that get pulled in. So what do you think? Can you get started? Is this enough to get started playing with it? Or is it too overwhelming, too scary? I'll post, I'll tweet out the repo. It's really not a lot of code. Um, yeah. But at some point you have to like create that WordPress installation. Yeah, I'm just using a vagrant machine to run just a whatever. Yeah. Thank you.